Hi, I'm Barry Willer. I'm a professor at the University of Buffalo, and along with my partner in research, John Letty, we developed the Buffalo Concussion Treadmill Test. We developed it because in the, uh, in the early days when they first came out with return to play guidelines, they were essentially based on individuals achieving exercise tolerance. We wanted a systematic way of evaluating exercise tolerance or intolerance in the case of those with concussion. And we started using the treadmill test for doing that. My purpose today is to show you how the test works, uh, what are the steps and stages and things to look for, and even some of the nuances of the assessment process. Before the patient is tested on the treadmill, they will have been seen by a doctor, both to assess their concussion and assess whether they are able to do the treadmill test. The Buffalo Concussion Treadmill Test was based on the Bulky Protocol. We've evaluated this treadmill test for safety and reliability, and we've published papers on that. But in order to guarantee safety, the key caution is that no one with concussion should be exercised beyond symptom exacerbation. Initially, the treadmill is set at a speed of 3.2 miles per hour. We increase the speed for someone who is tall or in very good condition and expected to come close to maximum. We adjust the speed down for anyone who's not so tall and for children. Every minute, the treadmill is raised one degree, thereby increasing the workload systematically. With each minute just before we raise the treadmill, we ask the patient to rate their overall symptoms on the visual analog scale and rate their effort on the RPE scale. We also record their average heart rate over the past minute. Before the patient gets on the treadmill, their whole procedure is explained to them. We tell them about the uh, charts that we use. One is the RPE chart that assesses their uh, effort and the other chart is, uh, is a visual analog scale that o is an overall assessment of their symptoms. They complete this and then at the beginning and then we assess it every minute throughout the treadmill testing. So as our test progresses, I want you to make sure you're giving me honest answers to how you're feeling. If you feel like you're getting unsteady on the treadmill, that is something to include into how you're feeling with your symptoms. And if you feel like your lungs and your legs are starting to give out a little bit more, that would be more of our perceived exertion scale, okay? Perfect. All right, in about five seconds, we're gonna see how you're feeling. Caitlin, what's our heart rate right now? How do you feel like you are on our faces scale? Um, I'm still at a two. Still at a two. And how hard do you feel like you're working over here? Um, still at You think you could go up another level? Yep. All right, here we go. While the patient is on the treadmill, the primary thing we're looking for is symptom exacerbation. We use the visual analog scale, that faces scale, to assess that on a regular basis. But we also observe the patient. We're looking for distress. We're looking for how they feel. We're looking at whether they can continue the conversation and so on. It's as, as much a clinical observation as it is a numeric one. So when somebody gives us their response on the visual analog scale, we're weighing their response against their actual presentation of signs of distress. We took three on our basis scale. Oh, and now I'm going to bring the grade down, and then I'm going to bring the speed down to a 2.2. We're going to do a two-minute cool down, okay? How did the drop, the drop in grade feel? Did you have any changes in your symptoms, headache worse, um, dizziness, lightheadedness? I'm just kind of getting used to it a little. A little, a little change bit, in the balance? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to walk for two minutes at this pace, and then we'll be done with the test, and we'll sit down, and we'll sort of see how you're feeling, okay? We are more conservative when we're testing someone who is acutely injured. That is, we will stop the test sooner just on the basis of how the person looks. If they show distress, we will often stop even if they don't necessarily move the three points on the analog scale as our manual would dictate. Okay, I'm going to stop the treadmill, just so you know. Get your balance. Okay, so we're going to do a 
And then when you feel comfortable, there's a chair behind you, you can come back and sit down. When we're trying to determine if somebody is fully recovered, it's not a VO2 max test. We don't exercise them to the 19 or 20 on the RPE scale. We're perfectly happy to stop at around 17, at most 18, and when the person exhibits signs of distress, not from symptom exacerbation, but just from the exercise itself. How do you feel on our symptom scale over here now? I'm getting a tiny bit of a headache. A tiny bit of a headache, so how so would you rate that on my scale? About a one. About a one. How hard do you feel like you're working over here? We're on a 17 now. Okay, do you feel like you could proceed on to the next stage, or do you think we'll be done for today? I think we could probably call it quits after okay. this one. So let's just finish off this this stage. Caitlin's going to get a chair behind you, okay? okay? First thing I'm going to decrease will be the speed, and then I will decrease the grade just based on how fast you're walking, okay? Okay. So here we go, I'm going to decrease the speed down to 2.0, and I'm going to hit the grade at the same time. Okay. Great job. One of the big advantages of using the treadmill testing is that if somebody shows exercise intolerance very early on, that is a low heart rate of, let's say, 100. 10 or 120, it tells us that they not only have the physiologic characteristics of someone with a concussion, but they are likely to take much longer to recover. That's very helpful for us in terms of giving someone some guidelines about prognosis.